<laughs> All right, we're going to continue to roll into our media availabilities here at Talladega Super Speedway. We've now been joined by Brad Keselowski, driver of the number six RFK Racing Ford. We'll go ahead and go to questions in the interest of time. If you have a question, raise your hand, and we will look to get a mic to you. All right, we're going to start up front with Matt Weaver. Matt Weaver, Sports Knot. Um, what sort of experience, if at all, have you had with like the Netflix camera crews, the documentary people? Uh, yeah, I haven't been involved at this time, but uh, you know that's always subject to change. So uh, none would be my answer right now. I, I think uh, I've heard other others that have been a part of it, and I think uh, sounds like a, a good deal for the the sport. But uh, it has I haven't been personally involved in it yet, Matt. And then to that point given the success of Drive to Survive and how they kind of exploded F1's popularity in the States. Um, how could that be kind of a similar thing for NASCAR, and what does the portrayal of our sport need to be to, I guess, attract the masses? Yo, well, that's a deep question. <laughs> what does the portrayal of our sport need to be to attract the masses? I should have known not that one before I came here. I would have wrote something down like that's a really... second month in a row you told me that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we all like a little bit of drama and soap operas, but, uh, you know, I think uh, for our sport, you know, uh, I always go back to the Ken Squire days because I always loved the way that he talked about the sport. You know, where we would talk about kind of common men doing uncommon things and, you know, living on the edge of safety and all these other things. And uh, I always thought that it was so compelling. And when I would go back as a kid and, and rewatch the, the old CBS races with him on, I was just so thoroughly entertained by that uh, mentality. And, uh, you know, one of the things I always find so interesting about our sport is that we work so hard for safety. And uh, and that that's uh, important. We should always work towards it. But we almost... To, some degree tell the story too much because it is still pretty dangerous and it's like we're trying to convince ourselves that it's safe uh when you come here weekends like this and you know some other things you see you know, the big wrecks and it's like we're, we're trying to make ourselves feel better about it by telling the safety story but on the, on the some side of it, it's kind of like well, maybe we shouldn't talk so much about it like maybe if i think we almost water it down for fans and they don't understand just how dangerous it still really is to to be a race car driver and and to to race cars or trucks or whatever it might be for a living and so um that's a really long-winded way of saying uh you know i love the way the sport used to be covered back in the, the the ken squire days and uh you know if we can tell that story i think it would resonate and that would be my personal preference all right we'll no go to gwen gwen deru birmingham times you've been around birmingham a few times yeah Children's of Alabama a few times. Are you still affiliated with them or doing something with them presently? Uh, not at this time, but we, we've, I've got to do some great things in this area, um, you know, with, especially with servicemen and service women, uh, and that's always been very rewarding to me. I, I really love coming here. I, I feel, uh, for whatever reason, just a really strong bond. i got a lot of fans in this area, and, and you know, I'm sure certain some of that's from – you know, winning races here, but I, I think it just, uh, I, I just enjoy being here and enjoy being around the people here and, and seeing them kind of let loose and, um, you know, enjoy the race weekend. It's uh, always so interesting coming here because until this year, I feel like every time you come here, there's no cell phone service or none of those, you know, creature comforts. And it, it feels like kind of going back in time. Uh, it's almost, I'm almost glad that my phone doesn't work sometimes. But hold on, I got to hedge myself on that one. But, <laughs> Um, but uh, it's, it's always just a fun place for me to come here. Uh, is it Gwen? Yeah, it's a fun place for me to come. We've got some great fans, and we get to do some great things for charities th throughout the, the, the years and, and meet some people. And uh, it's fun for me because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 14 years now into the Cup Series, and it, it's in some ways gone really slow and some ways gone really fast. And one of the things that, that makes it still fun and still rewarding is, is coming and seeing people like, oh, I saw this person, you know, eight years ago and haven't seen them since. Or, you know, I just went and did a thing in the campground and like, oh, I was here for your first win in, in 09 and to hear them tell the stories. And uh, that, that makes it really special to, 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 you know, be a veteran in the sport. But uh, it certainly doesn't change the hunger I have. 
All right, additional questions for Brad? Okay, we're going to come up front to Lee, then we'll go to Kelly. Lee Spencer, catchfeds.com. Brad, what do you remember your first win here? I mean, um, I know after that it was like, not a running joke, but the fact that you got your mother a housekeeper. Mm -hmm. I mean, with all the kids that she had and everything that she had done for you, you thought that that would be a nice gesture. But what do you remember of that win and just, you know, being with Finch and being a development driver yeah. for Hendrick at the time? I mean, just so much seemed to change on that day. Yeah, I, I guess now I look bad and I, I couldn't have pinpointed it then, but I can pinpoint it better now. I, I, I remember feeling like, uh, you know, I had a big case of uh, imposter syndrome, like I'm not supposed to be here. And, uh, you know, it, it felt very surreal. Uh, and I imagine a lot of people the first time they win a cup race probably feel that way to some degree. Uh, and, and then just kind of this, you know, riding this high of uh, maybe I will make it in the sport because you never know, especially early in your career, like if you're going to have any staying power. Um, Especially, and that hits home watching the, the truck races here. And I, somebody had posted a stat online about how the, you know, none of the last five winners from the truck race were even in the race today. And uh, like that, that's kind of like personifies or the, the fear that I think you have as a race car driver, especially in your, your early years in the Cup Series when you haven't won a race and you haven't had any of that success. And, and you're stuck thinking to yourself, well, you know, something to the effect of this could all disappear tomorrow. And uh, when you win that race, you, you know, when you win a cup race, that, that feeling doesn't go away, but you just feel like a little more comfortable uh, in your own skin. And it's a, it's a super unique feeling of confidence and, and staying power uh, that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really, I'm not sure I know how to explain, uh, but uh, I'll never forget that. It's probably the, the strongest memory and thought that I have of it. No problem. Okay, Kelly. Kelly, CrownRacer.com. Brad, you are the only playoff driver through four races with top tens in each of those races. How far can consistency take this team? You've been in the playoffs before. You know mm -hmm. how this works. How how far can that continue um, to keep you guys going? Uh, you know, I guess it depends on if you have stage points or not. If, if you put up good stage points, that'll, I think, take you all the way to Phoenix. Um, you know, I, I feel like it's going to take in this round, you know, 110 points. And, you know, probably the next round is going to take 125 to 130 points. And, uh, you know, top tens with stage points will, will get you there in the races. But uh, you also know inevitably you're not going to be able to, to continue to, to top ten your way through it, right? You're going to have to actually put up wins and then all those other things, uh, top five. So, uh, I, I know that that's coming too, that we need to execute those pieces. Uh, but when you're not in a spot to win, I think it's important to get those points. And then it's important to, to have solid days. And especially in these early rounds, uh, you know, I think that's kind of a good uh, ethos for our team to, to operate under. Is your confidence growing with every race in the playoffs of just what this team is capable of and how far you guys maybe can go versus what the – the yeah. expectations yeah. were. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I've, now that I'm wearing the team owner hat, uh, you know, I, I sit in different meetings than I used to. Some good ones, too, with competition, don't get me wrong, but, you know, I was sitting in a financial meeting and going over budgeting, which is everybody's favorite topic. And and uh, we, we got to talking about how, the, you know, in, in the company budget, we had 14th and 16th. And, we, you know, now after making it through the round of 12, getting to the round of 8, you, you know, the, the budget projections change. And, um, you know, those are moments I think hit hard or hit home where you're like, yeah, you know what, actually this is better than what we thought. You know, this is better than what we, uh, not what we hoped for, but than what we thought might happen. And so, uh, you know, we're, we're on a good path, but, you know, you, you try not to take anything for granted, Kelly. I think um, uh, we could go out and, and put up goose eggs this weekend, and uh, if you take your eye off the ball in this sport for one second, that's exactly what's going to happen. Okay, we're going to go to Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. How difficult is it as a driver uh, if you're second on the last lap, if you're leading on the la second on the last lap, to determine when to make your move? In the sense of, do you want to make it as yeah. soon as possible, knowing you leave yourself vulnerable, maybe coming out of four, but if the caution comes out, you win, 
or wait and maybe watch that opportunity go away? How, how do you, yeah. in, yep. that, in that 50 seconds of that last lap, how do you assess how to make that decision? Do uh, to some degree, I've let go thinking about that, Dustin, because, you know, I've, I've had races here where I've, I've won and lost where you're in position to make the move and the yellow comes out and you just literally pass the start-finish line. You didn't even get an opportunity to make the move. And you're like, oh, I should have made the move. Then, you know, over time, I've, I've had races where I feel like we've gotten into a spot to uh, where we're, we're the leader on the last lap and it falls apart, <laughs> you know, where you get your doors blown off. And you're like, oh, I was up front too early. And I think it's Talladega, Daytona, these tracks are really easy to overthink. And uh, not that you don't want to put the effort in or the workload and all that, but sometimes you have to just allow yourself to accept the fact that there's only certain pieces you can control, that being one of them. Like what's going to happen on the last lap? Do you want to be leading? Do you want to be second? There's so many circumstances around that that you can't control, whether it's a, a yellow coming out, as I was just saying, or you know, the line behind you formulating the right way or, or the wrong way. That To some degree, you just you want to get in position to strike and, and just be thankful for that and hopeful that you don't do anything to screw it up and, and, and let kind of uh, circumstances dictate from there. But uh, you know, ultimately, the, the goal for me is – I, I don't ever think about it like, hey, I want to be in the lead or I want to be second I, you know, on the last. I don't really think about it that way. I, I, I think about it more so of I want to just be fortunate enough to be in the top two or three to, you know, if things go my way, they'll go my way. No problem. Okay. Any final questions for Brad? All right, Brad. Thank you so much for spending some Take time. Take care, guys. Best luck Thank this you. weekend. Hope to see you later.